Do you have bone on bone hip pain? Has your doctor told you your hips are the worst they've ever seen? Well, fear not because in 2015, my doctor told me that my hips were a mess and I was going to need hip surgery. But fast forward to today and I have no hip pain at all. In this video, I'm going to share exactly what happened the day the doctor dropped the bad news on me. And I'm gonna go over four scientific studies that reveal the truth about bone on bone hip pain. Stay tuned. Okay, so imagine this. It was 2015 and I was playing frisbee golf with a friend. I received the call from the doctor. They said, hey Shane, I've got your x-ray and your MRI results. Bad news, buddy, it turns out you've got FAI. They said, I recommend you get a consult with a surgeon ASAP. And in this moment, I actually started to feel my heart racing. But then I kind of shook my head and was like, wait a minute, and a smile started to creep onto my face. My friend looked at me and said, What's so funny? The doctor just told me I have a hip condition that might require immediate surgery. You told me you had your hip problems, but haven't you been pain-free for years? Yeah. And I went trail running yesterday. And the day before that, I was doing the splits. You see, here's the plot twist. I had known that I had FAI since 2011, but I had already overcome my hip problems. And I was only getting these x-rays and the MRIs out of curiosity. So that day when the doctor revealed the bad news to me, it was a revelation. How could my x-rays and MRIs show that I still had very bad hips and I was in a very bad situation, but I had no pain or movement problem? How could advanced medical imaging be so wrong about what really causes hip pain? To understand this, let's look at the science. Researchers in 2008 looked at 4,151 people in the Copenhagen Osteoarthritis Study. About 17% of the men and 4% of the women had cam deformity. Cam deformity means that the head of the femur is not perfectly round, and theoretically this can cause big hip problems. Oftentimes doctors will hold up a x-ray to a person and they'll point out the limited joint space and they'll say, you see this? That's bone on bone. But if this bad bone theory of FAI were true, in this study there should have been a clear relationship between bad bone shapes and big hip problems. But here's the shocker. There wasn't. The researchers found that cam deformity was completely unrelated to hip pain and arthritis. In their own words, we found no significant association with self-reported hip pain. Furthermore, cam morphology wasn't even correlated with arthritis either. Whoopsie! I guess that's strike one for the theory that bad bones cause big hip problems. Now you might be asking yourself, okay, this is interesting, but what if that study was a fluke, a mere anomaly? Well, Two years later, researchers published another study looking at abnormal bone shapes, FAI, and hip pain. They looked at 200 asymptomatic people, aka people without hip pain, and found that 24.7% of the men and 5.4% of the women had bad bone shapes, but they had no symptoms. Ouch, strike two against the bad bones cause big problems theory. And this is fascinating to me personally because I have cam morphology in my bad hip, but I have no symptoms anymore. So I think about myself in that study and I realize that I would have been one of the almost 25% of men who had bad bones, but no pain. Pretty crazy, right? And in yet another study in 2011, researchers looked at pelvic CT scans from 108 men and 272 women they found that 14% of the men and 6% of the women had irregular bone shapes, but no complaints about their hips. Are you starting to notice a trend? The researchers said, it appears that the cam type femoral acetabular deformity is not rare among the asymptomatic population. Or in plain English, lots of people have the FAI deformity, but no pain or problems. Yowza, that's strike three against the bad bones being the cause of big hip problems. So at this point, obviously this theory is striking out big time, but just to drive the point home, let's look at one more study. In 2013, a study looked at the CT scans of 50 asymptomatic people aged 20 to 40. Their conclusions were also pretty surprising. They said, at least one abnormal parameter was present in 66% of joints and two or more abnormal parameters were present in 29% of joints. They also discovered that parameters of mixed morphologic characteristics, aka cam and pincher, were found in 22% of joints. In non-sciencey speak, 
That means we scanned these people and 66% of them had at least one weird thing happening in their joints, but none of them have pain. Or let me explain it like this. Let's say you're at a big party, you're dancing, you're having a good time with all your able-bodied friends. When suddenly these nerdy researchers walk in, they bust out their scientific equipment and start scanning everyone's hips. Before the partygoers can protest this impromptu and slightly invasive interruption, the scientists boldly declare, listen up everyone, it turns out that two thirds of you have bad bone shapes. We are so sorry for you. What happens? Well, if these partygoers know what you now know, they would look at each other, shrug, and go right back to busting a move on the dance floor with their abnormal yet perfectly pain-free hips. Kind of puts things in perspective, doesn't it? I guess we could call this strike four against the bad bones equal big hip problems theory. But wait a minute, isn't it three strikes and you're out? Well, maybe this theory needs to get sent back to the minor leagues, or at least be updated to include a more comprehensive view about what really causes hip pain. A view that also takes into account your muscles, fascia, movement. The message at this point should be clear. Bad bones don't necessarily cause big hip problems. And this shouldn't really be surprising. Like most things in life, it's a little more complicated than just one factor. Do bones matter? Of course. For example, if my femur filled up 100% of my acetabulum and there was no space for it to move around at all, obviously that could be a problem. So in some cases, bone shape and size will matter, but only at the extremes, not in the majority of cases. And let's think logically for a second. Are we only bones or are we made up of other things? Of course, we're made up of muscles and soft tissue, duh. Not to mention a very complex nervous system that coordinates and orchestrates all this movement. And this is what we should be focusing on, muscles and movement. This is where we can most immediately help with the real pain that you might be experiencing. To return to my example, eight years after the doctor told me that I had nasty bone on bone hip impingement, I'm running, I'm jumping, I'm playing sports, I'm lifting weights, and I'm doing the splits without pain or movement problems. And let's be clear, my bad bone shapes have not gone away. I've just learned how to optimize the most important factor, which is my muscles and the way that I move. And what's more, it's not just me. Remember all those thousands of people from the studies we just reviewed? They are symptom free, but they've got bad bones. And beyond that, there's thousands of students that I've helped with hip impingement personally since 2015. And those guys are also moving and feeling good. Even with their bad, or maybe we should call it different, but still normal, bone shapes. Even some of the worst cases that I've seen where doctors told people, you see this, this is bone on bone, the worst, the worst that you can have. Even for those people, there's always hope to move and feel better. Okay, so hopefully by now I've cured you of the fear that bad bones are a death sentence. But I know some of you may still be thinking, okay, I don't have to panic about my bone shapes, but if I still have hip pain, what should I do? Well, here's exactly what you should do. Focus on what you can control, AKA focus on your muscles, how you move and your lifestyle. In other words, learn how to do targeted tissue work, which is like precision massage, learn how to do progressive stretching and learn how to re-educate and strengthen your muscles in an intelligent and mindful way. We call this the TSR approach to hip pain. And it's the closest thing to the fountain of youth that you're ever going to find for your hip problems. This approach has helped over 8,123 students who have gone through our program since 2015, and it can help you too. So if you're ready to put some WD-40 on your hips and get them moving and feeling better, check out thefaifix.com. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one support, you can email me directly at support at gotrom.com and inquire about one-on-one -on -one coaching with me or one of my trained coaches. If you found this video enlightening, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and please share this video with someone who needs to see it.